Hello, I am Inez Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com and with Halloween lying around the corner, I decided to show you how to create this intro. Alright, so that's a pretty cool intro, especially for horror kind of movies. So let's see how I've created and if you don't want to follow this tutorial or you want to support our channel, you can buy this template and the link in the description and change the text very easily and just have the results instantly. Uh, but for those that want to know how I've done it, uh, let's start with the tutorial. So um, I'll put everything here in a little folder so you can just start following uh, from scratch. So I'll call this extra. You don't have to look and you don't have to pay attention to this. All right, so um, let's create a new composition, make it full HD and name it main comp. I'll add tut uh, so it's clear that it's for the tutorial. And then I will also make a duration of 300 and click OK. Then the first thing I've done is of course add my text. Um, I added a title and a subtitle. Uh, that's because I, I wanted to uh, have like two uh, segments of text. So um, let's say subscribe and I'll, I'll also enabled the small caps here and I use Times New Roman. Okay. And there we go. It's kind of classic and that's why I've chosen this one. Change my text color to white. Also change the resolution to full so it's actually a little bit better here. And then I will duplicate my text, uh, lower, put this a little bit more to the bottom and then Control T to edit your text, so click in the text and um, yeah, add the other text you want to add to uh, yeah, to, to your movie, to your intro. Um, so I'm going to click on the Align button here, so uh, Window Align and here you can actually center the text, so you can do that for both of these and then I will uh, add the Subscribe a little bit more to the top, uh, holding Shift and I also want to offset the four more just a bit like so and then of course I will also enable my uh, title and action save so I can actually look a little bit better and uh, select my text and maybe shift a little bit to the left so it's actually equal on both sides and then also center it like this so actually the align was totally useless um, but yeah sometimes it can be helpful so um, but yeah okay so I have my title right here I will uh, put this subscribe into a new uh, pre-compose move all the attributes uh, title Click OK and then for the subtitle layer pre-compose subtitle. So now you can actually just go in these comps, change the text and it will be changed to your entire uh, effect. So if you want to change your text later on or you want to duplicate it to add more segments like I've done in the tutorial preview. I have two segments of text but actually I made this intro just once and then just uh, pasted it uh, after the other one. Um, but yeah, okay. So go to 100 frames if you don't want to know what frames are. If you control click over here, you have seconds and then you have frames if you control click again. So um, actually, um, I like to work in frames sometimes and sometimes in, in time code. No idea why, uh, no particular reason. Um, but it's just because I'm used to working with frames in 3D, so that's uh, the only reason. So let's change for seconds uh, just so it's clear enough. Uh, so around three seconds uh, for the time zoom in a little bit on your timeline and now we have our text I will uh, click on my title go to effect Generate and I will add a fill here and I'll make it red like so copy that fill and paste it on the subtitle as well So for the background I've actually created a new solid here and rename it to fractal noise background and Here I will paste well put it on the bottom of my layers and go to effects, uh, noise and grain, fractal noise and change my fractal type to a dynamic progressive and also go to transform and just scale it up like so and also add a little bit more contrast here and you can also play with the complexity right here so maybe add a little bit more complexity or less complexity uh, that depends on, on yourself um, then I've also uh, added a new camera here, so I actually zoomed in in 3D space, so uh, I'll add a camera, uh, 35 millimeters will be okay, so click OK. Um, next, create a new null object here, and create, uh, well, make this null object a 3D layer, and rename it to camera uh, position, and then just uh, link the camera with the parent tool to the null object. And 
Right now, also for the background, I'm going to change this into 3D and actually I'm going to disable my text for now so we can actually concentrate on the scene itself. Uh, so I'll position it more towards the background, uh, like so. Holding shift will actually uh, move faster, so right now we're very far away. And then I'm just going to scale up my solid until it fits the composition again, so like so. Um, then I will duplicate my fractal noise. Well, actually, before I duplicate it, we'll also go to the evolution here and alt click on the evolution time times 50. So a very slow animation for my uh, fractal noise. So you can actually see that it's just animating softly here. And I actually also inverted everything, so I've changed it like this. Click the invert button, and then also, uh, let me think for a second, I've added a distort turbulence displace. And this to give it that nice, um, yeah, spin to it. So um, the amount is okay, maybe change the size a little bit, and play around with whatever you like. Maybe increase the amount just a bit. And so now we get the spin, and I kind of like it, it's changing up. Uh, everything here so yeah um, then duplicate that background and now play with everything uh, from the uh, transform evolution and the actual offset here so play a little bit with the offset maybe scale it a little bit bigger and offset it with the evolution like so and there we go now we have a different kind of background and we're going to press P on the keyboard and just bring it towards us so now we're going to bring it closer to the camera and then scale it down like so and you can actually toggle the switches and make this a screen um, or actually multiply I change it to multiply and there we go um, actually I'm not sure alright yeah multiply will be okay I guess um, we'll see afterwards then the position again make it closer to the camera again scale it down and just keep doing that until you have like a, a tunnel um, we can actually change it up a little bit more, so uh, maybe change the complexity to 4, uh, contrast of 100, uh, tra transform of 100, and yeah, just a little bit more to the offset here, so it's completely different again, and just may make it maybe even closer to the camera, it can actually be a little bit more intense, and then scale it down, alright, and now if we're going to toggle this on and off, we're going to see some difference in the background. We can duplicate it again once more and then uh, maybe change the brightness a bit. Again, the complexity to 6 and maybe a very big scale this time. So maybe 800 and then also a little bit of the offset here. And there we go. So let's see everything stacking up alright so click on the null object now go to P for position go to the beginning of your timeline and create a new keyframe then move ahead the three seconds as um, we have done and actually no uh, we're going to um, move ahead just one second barely one second so uh, half of a second and then we're going to zoom in a little bit like so around 1700 and then right over here, we're going to, um, almost at the end, we're going to just click on the keyframe. And then at the very end, we're going to zoom in even more. And there we go. So let's see what we have. I'm going to half my resolution, so it's going to render a little bit faster. Now we should zoom in a little bit more. Uh, so we get here at the second keyframe, just zoom in a little bit more. All right. Let's see what we have. Alright, so now something is happening here because of the two keyframes and uh, they are not similar so I'm going to copy these key, this keyframe and just paste it over here and then preview it again. Alright, that's kind of fun. Um, maybe even more intense. So what I will do is actually um, zoom into something like 5000. Also right here I'm going to change it to 5000. Then right over here I'm going to change it to 11000. Okay. Now, it's coming to a stop a very intense and it's just a straight linear animation. So what I will do is uh, select these two keyframes, right click, keyframe assistance and easy ease. And then go to uh, the uh, graph editor. And for this first keyframe, we're going to 
just put it at the beginning here and now also for the last one I'm just going to drag this in so it's actually not doing anything and then right here we're going to fade it like so and the same for the last one but the other way around and now it's going to come in very fast and stop very slowly and that's a little bit better but maybe a little bit too quick so I'm going to just not do it at max something like this and there we go okay alright so this is pretty cool um, I think we have whatever we wanted now what you can do is just duplicate these fractal noise and keep stacking them up so you have more details I uh, can maybe duplicate one of these and just paste them um, a little bit more towards the camera maybe or maybe away from the camera and then just make it a little bit more um, well just make sure it's the same scale as the other ones so I think it should be around here let's see a little bit higher and then just keep stacking them up maybe even rotate uh, the animation here so you can go to transform and rotate it a little bit and actually we can do this for all of these to offset them a little bit more so okay let's see what we have so this is getting better and uh, now we have a lot of detail and we get this nice mist kind of fog and uh, that we're flying through so that's uh, pretty cool and now we, it comes to coloring the background here so I'm going to close all these effects add a new adjustment layer and put them above the fractal noise here and actually I'm also going to create a new solid here and just make it background and just put that below everything there we go and we don't make this 3D so this is just a static black background for if anything would go wrong or so so for the adjustment layer I'm going to add a curve so right here color correction curve and then just play with the contrast just make sure you see enough you can also make them brighter if you want to there we go and now you can play with the colors so I like to add some reds um, maybe some blues here take away some of the blues and the highlights and play with the greens here you can actually just choose whatever you want to it really depends on the person and on the project of course so you can get some really cool stuff out of this so I'm just doing something and I'm seeing what works what doesn't work and we'll see alright let's keep this for now uh, maybe add a little bit more red here so it gets more orangey take away some of the greens alright so now go to effect sharpen and sharp mask and I will change my radius to 25 and now we're going to get this nice detail also what we can do is go to the fractal noise layers and just make sure they all have uh, motion um, motion motion blur yeah and then enable the motion blur for the composition as well and then if you're going to fly through you're going to see this nice motion blur which is also pretty cool actually I want these to be red and I'm going to take away all of my uh, other stuff so red pump it up yeah and there we go alright I like this one it's different than the preview but yeah it's just um, changing color so it's completely up to you alright so now we can enable the text again so uh, just enable the text make them 3D and just position them here so just put them in Z space until you see it there we go and try to center them like so and there we go so now if we're going to zoom in we're going to zoom to the text
also enable motion blur for the text of course Um, because of my background, which is red, I will change my text to be white. So I'm going to change that for now. Alright, what I decided to do is actually the camera position. I'm going to make it... I'm going to make it appear faster. And I'm going to bring this in to two seconds and also make it disappear a little bit faster. So I'm going to trim my comp right here and preview it again. Alright, I'm going to bring this a little bit more into my timeline and just make sure play around with the grab editor to see if it's uh, smooth here. And of course it's a lot of playing around with everything so that really depends whatever you're looking for but I think we are actually almost there so. Uh, then we're going to do the transition. Let's see. Alright, so now let's do the transition a little bit. So um, we're going to add a new adjustment layer and name this flash, flashlight, whatever. Um, and then we're going to affect color correction and add a exposure. There we go. Click on the exposure stopwatch, go one frame forward with the page down button and change it to something like 10. Then one frame forward again, change to zero, then again forward again forward 0 and then uh, maybe something like 2 and then forward 3 frames and then 0 again so now you would have something like this in keyframes so let me go over that again so we have 0, 10, 0, 5, 0, 2 and then it's going gradually to 0 and if we're going to play this back we get something like this so um, of course, in the middle of the text, we can actually, again, add a keyframe, move forward, um, change the exposure to 1, move forward, 0, move forward, 2, move forward, 0, move forward, 0, move forward 0.5, well, comma 5, 0.5, move forward, 0, and then, again, uh, at the end of everything, I'm just going to copy these keyframes and paste them at the end as well and just um, put them a little bit out of there so we get a nice transition with the out and in. Alright, that's pretty cool. Try to bring this a little bit more in here. I'm going to offset this flash a little bit later here, so I'm going to place them somewhere around here. So now we have actually everything that we needed. And then, of course, we can add a final adjustment layer um, with some final adjustments. And here I'm going to add a little bit of a glow here. So, oh, that's mosaic. Mosaic. Stylized glow. And there we go. Add a little bit of radius and duplicate it and add a lot of radius so and just play around with the intensity and if we're going to see this at a lot of exposure we're going to get a lot of glow okay so it's pretty cool like this uh, maybe a little bit too much for the text so I'm going to bring down the intensity like so okay and then maybe add a tint effect lower it a little bit to something like 25 and then add a nice vignette new adjustment layer rename it to vignette and then just choose the ellipse tool double click it subtract it F on the keyboard for feather and change it to something like 250 and then we're going to add a color correction curves and we're going to bring down the curves so we get this nice focus to the center and yeah, that's actually it to get this uh, intro. So what I've done then is actually just uh, duplicate it. Well, actually I made everything to be in one composition. So uh, sequence 01, for example. And then at the end, I'll just cut it right here. And just as example purposes. And then I made another one, put that behind it. And actually, uh, because of the flashes and because of the zoom, it's going to play in nicely with each other. So let's see.
Alright, so that's actually how to create a nice horror kind of movie intro. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.